So now it's July, month four of sheltering in place here in the United States because people just can't seem to get their shit together and follow the advice of epidemiologists. And by people, I'm talking about the average person who's walking around without a mask, state governments that allow businesses to open up against the advice of experts, and the federal government that is actually literally hoping Americans just get used to the idea of hundreds of people dying every single day from a preventable virus. And that's not a joke. Washington Post reporters found a whistleblower who said they're of the belief that people will get over it, or if we stop highlighting it, the base will move on and the public will learn to accept 50,000 to 100,000 new cases a day. That happened, but it's the end time, so nobody really noticed. Personally, I've been putting a lot of blame on the lack of decent science education in this country and our huge population of people who aren't just scientifically illiterate, but who are actively antagonistic towards science. But there are other hypotheses out there that might explain why people are so eager to contribute to the destruction of the human race. Today, I want to talk about conspiracy theories, collectivists, and individualists. This actually involves two different studies, both of which were published last week by the British Psychological Society. One is looking out for myself, exploring the relationship between conspiracy mentality, perceived personal risk, and COVID-19 prevention measures. And the other one is cultural orientation, power, belief in conspiracy theories, and intentions to reduce the spread of COVID-19. In the first study, researchers surveyed 991 French people, both before and after their government enacted measures to stop the spread of COVID-19, uh, such as avoiding public places, washing your hands. What they found was that before the government enacted those measures, People who are very conspiracy minded, meaning people who tend to be suspicious of the government and think that there's always a larger shadowy figure pulling the strings, those people tended to actually do the things that would stop the spread of the virus. You know, they were stocking up on stuff, staying home, the whole deal. But once the government caught up and said, okay, please shelter in place and wear masks and wash your hands, conspiracy theorists changed their minds and decided that actually they would not do those things. Like an angry toddler. Oh, you want me to do it? Forget it then. I wasn't shocked to read about that result since it does fit in with my own anecdotal observation. You know, back in February, I noticed people on social media and that pretty much does always mean Facebook, uh, completely freaking out about the Wuhan virus and saying that it's basically a death sentence, we need to stockpile goods, you know, stay at home, and, you know, also be super racist. Uh, that's why I made a video about coronavirus pointing out that, yes, it's a big deal that people should be prepared for, but it's not a death sentence. Hoarding goods won't actually help because this isn't the apocalypse. And for God's sake, it's no reason to be super racist or even regular racist. There's no reason. Uh, and sure enough, once the virus hit the United States um, and our unprepared government eventually got around to saying, OK, yes, yeah, stay inside, um, wash your hands. Those same stockpiling racist conspiracy theorists did a 180 and decided that, oh, actually, this is all a big hoax to steal our freedom. So this French study shows that it wasn't just Americans on Facebook who were flipping their behaviors. It was conspiracy theorists the world round. Amusingly, the researchers point out that one possible way to combat conspiracy theorists would be to hide the fact that it's the government who is enacting these safety standards. And I'm not exactly sure how a government would even do that, but it's very funny to imagine government officials officially engaging in a conspiracy to hide their involvement in stopping a pandemic just to get conspiracy theorists to comply because otherwise the conspiracy theorists will think the plan to stop the pandemic is a conspiracy. The researchers found that the only way to alleviate the anti-safety reaction amongst conspiracy theorists is if those conspiracy theorists personally felt that their life was at risk from the virus. 
if they believed that they were more likely to catch it and more likely to die from it, then they were more likely to follow the rules, regardless of how conspiracy minded they were. Otherwise, despite the fact that thousands of other people were dying, they didn't really give a shit if they didn't think it was going to negatively affect them. That's where the second study comes into play. Psychologists at University of Kent surveyed about 700 people from around the world, with the majority of them being in the US and the UK. And they asked them about COVID-19 conspiracy theories, about whether or not they were following the government's uh, recommendations, and interestingly, they also asked whether the subjects tended to skew towards collectivism or individualism. Collectivism and individualism are philosophical concepts that, like love and hate, are often thought of as being these crisp, mutually exclusive opposites, but are in fact muddy, sometimes overlapping concepts uh, that humanity has been trying to fully understand for quite some time now. But to put it simply, individualism is the idea that uh, one's personal rights and responsibilities should take precedence over the greater good. Like Ayn Rand, before she started collecting social security payments and getting Medicare coverage. Collectivism is the idea that we're all in this together, that uh, each person's actions affect their neighbors, and so we must sacrifice some individual freedoms for the greater good. Like Lenin, before he accidentally set up a dictatorship and the eventual crushing of Marxist thought. Okay, sure, I probably could have picked some better idols of individualism and collectivism, but the point is that blind adherence to either one is exceptionally difficult, if not impossible, and also maybe poorly considered. Ooh, did I just both sides this argument? I think I might have, sorry. Uh, you can also think of entire cultures as either individualistic or collectivist, like the United States is more of the former, South Korea is more of the latter. Anyway, the researchers at University of Kent found that individualists were more likely to believe COVID-19 conspiracy theories and not take actions to mitigate the spread of the virus. Collectivists were more likely to socially distance themselves, wash their hands, and trust the expertise of doctors over Facebook conspiracy theories. The scientists point out that while individualism has its benefits in certain situations, during large-scale disasters like the plague or climate change, for example, individualists tend to lose their feeling of control and power. When people feel powerless, past research shows us that they tend to reach for superstition and conspiracy theories. And this study backs that up, showing that collectivists actually found empowerment in banding together against a common foe. Uh, even though that common foe was just a virus. As I mentioned, the study did have a majority of respondents, about 65%, coming from either the US or the UK, which are both considered to be individualistic cultures. So the researchers point out that future research could expand upon their findings by focusing on cultures that are more collectivist uh, to see how their attitudes towards coronavirus differed and maybe whether or not they had some more success dealing with coronavirus. But just from this study, they do see compelling evidence that part of the secret towards getting people like Americans to comply with life-saving recommendations would be to enhance their feelings of cohesion and to boost their empowerment through collectivism. That's a tough sell here uh, when socialism is seen as a dirty word, but it is something really fascinating to think about because sometimes I fall into this trap of uh, oversimplifying. Like if only we had better science education, the United States wouldn't be in this position of having 131,000 deaths and 3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. But it's not quite that simple. You know, you can understand the science all you want and still not care about your community. Uh, so we also need to do a better job of encouraging empathy. And if we can't do that, then we at least have to stress to people how a collectivist attitude can benefit them individually, or at least as individualism relates to both an individual and the people that they directly care about. You might not be worried about getting COVID, uh, but if you have half a heart, 
you probably don't want your parents or your grandparents or your diabetic brother to to get the disease, including getting it from you, even if you're asymptomatic. There are a lot of ways to get people to do the right thing. And it does seem like here in the United States, we have failed in pretty much all of those ways. But it is helpful to remember that if we want a smarter, more scientifically minded society, then we can't just focus on science, technology, engineering, and math education. We also need empathy and a desire to support and uplift others in that society.